I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. <laughs> that was the cheesiest intro I've ever done for a YouTube series, ever. Hello everyone, and welcome to Missildyne Online and our series of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. This is going to be a complete playthrough of all three games and something that I've been excited to do ever since I started YouTube in 2010. Mass Effect is one of my favorite game series of all time, and I'm so glad that there finally exists a version that I can bring to you. We'll be playing this entire series on the PlayStation 5. Obviously, it's not actually for the PlayStation 5, but because of you can backwards compatible, you can play it on play. So we're going to be playing it on PlayStation 5. I even have some cool ways of showing you trophies that you can't normally get in a single playthrough. And don't worry, we'll get into it and I'll show you how it's all done. And we'll have a lot of I can't wait. It's going to be a 100% complete playthrough in this episode. I'd like to introduce you to my Commander Shepard. New episodes will be premiering every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you know when we're premiering. I'll see you guys in the premieres. Enjoy. So let's just jump right into it. I am so excited to introduce you all to Commander Corey Shepard, but not yet. There's some stuff that I want to show you first that came with the Legendary Edition, things that I think are going to change Mass Effect 1 for the better, I hope. And I'm so excited that we all get to see this and experience this together. Man! Oh, it feels like forever. I'm so excited. Can we just, can we just take a minute? to appreciate this screen, and this music. After all these years, we finally get to play this game in a real definitive way. It's beautiful. Anyways, let's get started. Our journey to save the galaxy begins now. Well, okay, sort of now. We're going to go to the extras real quick because I want to show you guys some of the options that they have here in the gameplay menu real quick. So we are going to turn our combat difficulty to insanity. That is the hardest difficulty in the game. And that, of course, is the one that we're going to be rocking. We are going to turn off auto level up. I do not recommend having that on because uh, you want full control of you and your squad. So you don't really want that. Level scaling. Now, this is the big thing that they've changed here. They have a legendary mode level scaling and a classic mode in classic mode the original 1 to 60 level range will be used instead of this new 1 to 30 level range xp and talent points progression remains the same but the number of levels is doubled so i highly recommend going the legendary mode i think it's gonna flow into mass effect 2 and 3 way better don't forget this isn't just mass effect 1 anymore it's mass effect legendary edition 1 2 and 3 are really all the same game as much as they possibly can be anyways so to kind of simplify that legendary mode is where it's at Squad power usage, we want that off, especially on Insanity. If you're playing this on a lower difficulty, you could probably leave it on, it's not a big deal. But you don't want someone's incredibly powerful ability that you need in a specific situation to be on cooldown because they decided to use it when you didn't need it. Subtitles, of course, we're gonna turn that on so that you guys get the best viewing experience possible. Auto saves, if you're playing on Insanity, please turn this on, highly recommend it. And I'll keep in the tutorials on for now as well. Just in case I forget something, the game can say, hey, you forgot something. You get the idea. And trophies, real quick, I just want to show you that for the most part, the trophy list from the original game is still intact, including the using abilities, meaning that you need to play the game as, uh, really the best way to do it is to play as an engineer um, and try to, you know, play your first full playthrough as an engineer and then uh, play as an adept later. We'll get into the classes and you can kind of cheese the trophies with an adept. That means that we also have all of the ally trophies, meaning you need to play the game more than once to get all of the trophies. And the big one here, new to the Legendary Edition, is we now have Insanity 1, 2, and 3, which are basically to complete all three games in Mass Effect Legendary Edition on Insanity without changing difficulty. And then we have Paramore 1, 2, and 3, which is to have a relationship, a romantic relationship in all three games. And we have the Long Service Medal, which has actually been changed from the original version. Now it's to finish Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 with the same character. No longer do you have to worry about getting to level 60 for a trophy. There are no level trophies whatsoever included in Mass Effect 1, uh, which is very, very cool. And a lot of their, uh, you know, you need to kill so-and-so with blah, blah, blah. All of that is actually shared now between the three games. So to kill 250 enemies, nah, you can do that between all three games. And odds are, you probably will. So we're going to jump out of the trophies, and we are 
finally going to start our career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. I love this new secure connection confirmed. Ooh, it's nice. It's spicy. And here we have the default John Shepard, the default Jane Shepard, the new default Jane Shepard, I might add. This is her Mass Effect 3, the way she looks in Mass Effect 3 when they kind of settled on a, a, a default market for Jane. Uh, but, you know, they always had the, kind of the look of John Shepard. Uh, but Jane finally brought into Mass Effect 1 with the way that she looked in Mass Effect 3 and all the promotional material, which is very exciting. But of course, we are going to enter a new ID. We are going to go with... Surprise. We're going to go with a Fem Shep. Now, I've actually never played Mass Effect as a female Shepard ever, ever. And I am very excited to finally be able to do that. Jennifer Hale is an incredible, incredible voice actor. And I cannot wait to see her performance in this game. Of course, this does limit us to some romantic relationships. Uh, and one of my favorites means that we we won't be able to get it. But that's okay, because I, I have a backup plan. And I know exactly who we're going to be romancing, let me tell you. Uh, so we are going to go with the custom female shepherd. And of course, her name is going to be Corey because that can, you know, that can be a that can be a woman's name or a man. It doesn't Please matter. Please log in to access your profile. It doesn't matter. So, welcome. Hello to Corey Shepherd. Commander Corey Shepherd. Let's don't leave that part out. Now, here's where it gets interesting. This is Warning. when Data corruption you get a little bit more choices than just male or female. Program. We get to reconstruct pre history. our pre-service history and what we did before we actually joined the, the Alliance military. So we have Spacer. Both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. Colonist, you were born and raised on Menduar, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. When you were 16, slavers raided Menduar, slaughtering your family and friends. But you were saved by a passing alliance patrol, and you enlisted with the military a few years later. Or Earthborn, you were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropolises covering Earth. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by enlisting with the Alliance military when you turned 18. Now, these actually do kind of affect your character in a lot of different ways. The thing that I highly recommend when choosing your pre-service history and the next part that we have is to really consider the story of your shepherd, how you want your shepherd to be perceived in the world, how you want your shepherd to perceive the world. Those are more important than anything else. Yes, these do give specific bonus points to Renegade or Paragon, which is the morality system of Mass Effect. For instance, Spacer is one of the most uh, Paragon choices you can do. Uh, Colonist is one of is kind of the middle ground, and Earthborn is towards leans towards uh, Renegade a little bit more. And in the next option, it's even more so what those are. But obviously, if you wanted the most Renegade or the most Paragon, you could choose that. I don't think that's important. There are side quests, too, that you get throughout the game. Uh, there's a three in Mass Effect 1, one for each of these. And personally, I think that the Colonist one is one of the best. So we are going to go with the Colonist. Spacer, Colonist, or Earthborn? No, 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 no. We were raised on Menduar, and we unfortunately were there when the Batarians attacked and destroyed our family, our friends, our lives. And because of the Alliance coming to rescue us, we are forever indebted to the Alliance. We want to make them proud for what they've done for us, giving us the life that they've done. We are a colonist. Confirm psychological profile. Now we get our psychological profile, which is even more into how you want your shepherd to perceive the world, how you want your shepherd to be perceived by the world. We have Soul Survivor. During your service in the Alliance military, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. But you survived while all those around you fell, and now you alone are left to tell the tale. Or War Hero. Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risked your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism 
have earned you medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. Or ruthless. Throughout your military career, you have held fast to one basic rule. Get the job done. You've been called cold, calculating, and brutal. Your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers wary of you. But when failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. Now, I... this one is tough. And if you're anything like me and you're playing Mass Effect, it doesn't matter what choices you go in to already, you know, thinking about, you're you're going to sit there and you're going to be like, wait a minute, what if I did this instead? <laughs> it's going to happen. Just go with your gut, go with your instinct, go with the shepherd that you want to portray best in this world. We are going to go with Soul Survivor because as a colonist who was rescued by the Alliance, we have kind of made it our life mission to help protect these other colonies. We go to colonies all the time. That is the missions that we ask to have. That's what we want to do. We want to help these colonies. And unfortunately, because of that, we ended up heading to a colony that unfortunately didn't do so well. But because we wanted desperately to try to save as much as we could, we survived alone. And we will never let that happen again. Confirm military specialization. And now for the fun part. The part where I have been hemming and hawing for, for weeks. <laughs> this is the classes available to you in the first Mass Effect, the second Mass Effect, and third Mass Effect. But don't worry, the class that you pick in the first Mass Effect can be changed in Mass Effect 2 and 3. You're not tied to one class for all three games. Uh, and in fact, that's going to shape into our story, the fact that we can change classes. So these first three here are kind of your, uh, your very uh, specialized classes. And these three here are more your uh, hybrids, if you will. So let's look at Soldier. Soldier is going to be your third person shooter type character, your cover based shooter. You're gonna run behind cover and kind of shoot people and use weapons. They are combat specialists, ideal for front lines of a firefight. They have improved health. They can specialize in all weapon types and they start with the ability to wear medium armor and can train to get heavy armor. They're your running gunner. They're great. They're very strong throughout all three games. If this is what you wanna do, do it man it's it it honestly to me makes the most sense for a shepherd anyways shepherd and a lot of their responses uh seem to be a soldier through and through engineer these are tech specialists they use their holographic omni tool that you can see on her arm they decrypt security systems they repair or modify technical equipment they disrupt enemy weapons or shields and they heal their squad they can only wear light armor and they specialize in pistols but that's not a bad thing pistols are very very strong in mass effect one what i will say about the engineer is i think there are squad mates that you can get on your team that are wonderfully wonderfully talented at being engineers and having those abilities available to them and the same can almost be said about the other ones but not so much engineer i feel like you really do have that in your repertoire so it's a kind of hard one for me to recommend but it is one of the most powerful classes in the entirety of the mass effect series and then we have adepts adepts are biotic specialists they use the force i mean they use biotic implants and they can lift or throw objects shield the squad disable destroy enemies they can only wear light armor and they specialize in pistols just like our friend the engineer the adept is very very strong and actually having more than one adept on your squad is not a bad thing they are so good at cc and lockdown that while you're throwing people across a room you could have somebody else lifting them up uh uh completely stopping them and removing them from the fight i engineer and adept I think Adept, you can't go wrong with having more than one. Engineer, I kind of think you can. Then we get into the hybrid classes. We have Infiltrator. Infiltrators combine combat and tech abilities to specialize in the killing or disabling enemies at long range. They are trained to use Omni tools, focusing on decryption and offensive abilities rather than healing. They can specialize in pistol pistols or sniper rifles and wear medium armor. Now, my first time ever playing Mass Effect all those years ago, I actually rolled an Infiltrator and had a lot of fun. Highly recommend them. Uh, definitely a different way to play this game. They are very long range, so you would go with pretty meaty squad mates, send them in, and then you just kind of sit in the back and pick them off. It's fun, uh, but it's very methodical, and it's it's kind of slow. It's a little bit slower than I like to play my Mass Effect. Sentinels. Now, Sentinels are very cool because they kind of take the, the whole universe of Mass Effect and apply it to this one character. You get the best of both worlds. You get this 
really cool biotic lore, you get the tech lore, all of this stuff in combined into one character. They combine biotic and tech abilities. Typically, they use biotic abilities and advanced healing skills to defend allies, though they can also disrupt opponents with biotic or tech attacks. They are more efficient at tech and biotics than other classes, but at the expense of combat. They can only wear light armor and they receive no specialized weapon training. Now with the legendary edition, guns play a little bit better than if you didn't have that before. It was a mess. You could not use the gun if you did not have that specialization. That's not so much true in this new version of the game. So you could probably get away with using a Sentinel and doing other things. Sentinel becomes incredibly powerful in future games and it's pretty strong in Mass Effect 1. It just doesn't feel like Shepard to me. And then we have Vanguard, probably one of the coolest classes in the future games. Uh, in this one, it doesn't quite have its coolness, but it's still pretty dope. I mean, Vanguards are biotic warriors. They combine biotics and weapons to take down opponents are especially deadly at short range. They specialize in pistols and shotguns and wear medium armor. Shotguns get better in later games, and I don't think they're that strong in Mass Effect 1. Pistols really are uh, incredibly strong DPS machines in Mass Effect 1. Vanguard is a very, very cool class, and I highly recommend it if you're the type of player that wants to rush in, get into people's faces, and take them down. Definitely way different than the Infiltrator, but I highly recommend the Vanguard. But my friends, that's not what we're going to do. We are going to be adept commander Corey Shepard. We're going to be an adept. This is going to play into the story of our Shepard throughout the three games that we're going to be playing here. Uh, trust me, I have some uh, ideas and, uh, and ways to make this going going to be pretty cool later on. So we are starting Mass Effect 1 as an adept. That does not mean that we are not going to change in the future. So keep an eye out for that. Confirm facial identification. Now, here's the thing. They changed the appearance, the, the way that you can modify your character and, and all that in this game. And, and they've done some pretty incredible things. Uh, you can kind of, I mean, just, just real quick, you can cycle the presets and see just how much they've actually done with this. If you played the first game, this is, this is wild. They've done so much to make this, to make this better. So many more skin tones. It seems, um, they've done a wonderful, wonderful job. The complexion, of course, you can change every single thing about your shepherd. You can change your scarring. All, Profile all of that. Confirm facial identification. You, there's so much you can do. I am not going to be doing that because for the first time Confirm ever, facial identification. we have the default Jane Shepard available to us right out of the gate. And when I hear Jane Shepard and I hear Jennifer Hale voice her character, this is who I think of right here is this default one. And honestly, uh, I just, I think it looks awesome. Anyways, this is probably a character that I would have wanted to design myself. So we're gonna go with the defaults, Fem Shep, uh, and I'm I'm very excited about it. I think it's I think it's very cool, and I hope you guys appreciate it as well. I also don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm watching a playthrough and I see somebody make a character and I don't really like the way it looks, I, I it kind of takes me out of it. So I feel like this is not only the safest option, but for me, the coolest option. This, my friends, profile reconstruction is complete. our Commander Shepard. Commander Corey Shepard, the colonist who was the sole survivor on a coos. We learned to adapt and became an adept. Let's go ahead and let's start Mass Effect 1. After I hit that button. Identification. And of confirmed. course, if you didn't change your settings before, you can do that now. They're going to make sure that you can. So obviously you can see our combat difficulty is on insanity. Well, what about Shepard? She grew up in the colonies. She knows how tough life can be out there. Her parents were killed when slavers attacked Mindwar. She saw her whole unit die on a coos. She could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discover the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. 
In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history. We call it Mass Effect. So dope. The Arcturus Prime relays in range. Initiating transmission sequence. Commander. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot, requiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. The lighting effects, even the sounds. Woo. The board is green. Approach run has begun. Our Commander Shepard. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Now, these early episodes are going to be a lot less of me talking and a lot more of the game. Uh, which is probably for the best. Uh, but this is introducing us to kind of the main mechanic thing, if you will, of, of Mass Effect, something that I think is the most important. So yes, there are these big choices that you can make in Mass Effect, but the power of these games is the fact that you get to choose how your Shepard responds to things. And and that, to me, is the, is the power of this game, this dialogue wheel that we have here. And you'll kind of see that there's always going to be, uh, you know, kind of the way that you respond is is the lower end here is going to be a renegade type thing. The middle is going to be a neutral and the top is going to be more paragon. So that's something to consider when you're when you're making some of your choices. Paragon and renegade are morality choices that you can have throughout the game. And obviously, the better you the more you react a certain way, the more you'll be able to react a certain way later when it when it actually comes down to it. And it's super important. But I wanted to point that out. Now, for us, I agree. This, an idiot would believe that story. And they don't send specters on shakedown runs. So there's more going on here than the captain's letting off. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Ethan Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the calm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Yeah, you made him mad. Great. You pissed the Captain off, and now I'm gonna pay for it. <laughs> Don't blame me. The Captain's always in a bad mood. Only when he's talking to you, Joker. So rude. Making me pay for that? Anyways, you'll notice that we just got plus two Paragon points. You'll see that we got experience and a codex entry and all of this jazz. Now, first of all, I just wanna I just wanna say, how can a game be bad when you when right out of the gate you got Seth Green as one of your crewmates? That's that's awesome. Joker's such a cool character. Anyways, I want to show you the new HUD that we have here. You can see that this is a lot more in line with Mass Effect 2 and 3. If you've never played those before, you might not notice, but this is a huge upgrade from what it was earlier. Also, the textures that we have now in Mass Effect 1 just look absolutely incredible. Beautiful. 
And real quick, I want to show you some of the stuff that we have here. We have our codex, which has a primary section here, which is actually read out to you uh, by an in-game narrator. So you can kind of check out to see what this is. The codex is very important, especially if you want trophies and you want to level up and all that jazz. You don't just get levels from finishing quests and beating up enemies. You also get them from exploring and opening chests and getting new codex entries and all of that jazz. We also have our profile here for our Commander Shepard. If you chose anything different, yours is going to be different from this one. The entire settlement, when we were raised on Mendwar in the Attican Traverse, the entire settlement was raised and our friends and family were slaughtered. And a passing alliance patrol rescued us. This was by Batarian slavers. Batarian slavers attacked us. Batarian being one of the races in the Mass Effect universe. We enlisted with the Alliance military, eventually volunteering to go to Akuz, a colony that had mysteriously dropped out of contact. As soon as it arrived on the surface, our patrol was attacked by Thresher Maws, mindless abominations of teeth and tentacles that rose up from beneath the earth. Constant gunfire couldn't drown out the shrieks of our fellow soldiers as they were dragged down to a gruesome death. Fifty Marines died on Akuz. We were the only ones to make it back to the landing zone alive. A monument on the planet commemorates the massacre. A grim reminder of the price humanity must pay as they spread throughout the stars. And a price that Commander Shepard here wants to lower as much as possible. Then, of course, we have the timeline of the Humanity and Systems Alliance. We were born in 2154. And uh, right after that, you start to have some pretty cool stuff like Children of Singapore exhibit minor telekinetic abilities. And a fir uh, the first contact war begins in 2157. We were alive for that with the occupation and liberation of the human colony of Shansi. And then we start learning potential biotics, which is very neat. And then later on, 2170, very young, 16 years old, Batarian slavers attack the Alliance colony of Minduar. Six years later, the Skillian Blitz happens. Pirates and slavers attacked Elysium, the human capital in the Skillian Verge. 2177, the Alliance colony of Akuz destroyed. 2178, in retaliation of the Skillian Blitz, an Alliance fleet wipes out an army of slavers on the moon of Torfan. Guys, that colony attack happened six years ago. That's it. So that's still pretty fresh in the mind of Commander Shepard here. We also have our journal so we can check to see what our missions are. We are Commander... Lieutenant Commander Shepard, Executive Officer on the SSV Normandy, and we need to go speak to Captain Anderson. And the big thing here is our squad points, which is pretty darn neat. You'll notice right out of the gate that they give us three points. We are only level one. They give us three points, obviously, because of the level squish, if you will, that the Legendary Edition gave us. And we have different abilities. We have basic armor. Basic armor is worth unlocking big time, because you want to unlock pistols pretty quickly so that you can get this ability here, Marksman, which is going to help tremendously on getting a lot of damage very quickly. This is a big, big DPS cooldown here, something that you probably want if you are an adept, a, an engineer, anything like that. Pistols is something that you want to open. Then we have our biotic abilities. We have throw, which throws enemies away from the caster with a force of 600 newtons. And that actually allows us to, eventually we can unlock lift, which lifts them up into the ground, uh, into the air, and advanced throw, which kind of upgrades our stuff. And then of course, once we can, we can do lift, and we right out of the gate have warp available, which is a dot that you can put on people, and it lowers the target's damage protection by 50%, which can actually be pretty huge. Then an adept specialty, we have singularity. This just creates a little mini black hole that draws everything in. You can increase the radius and duration of that by upgrading it. Then we have the incredibly powerful ability, Barrier. This bolsters your shields with a biotic barrier that will absorb up to 400 points of damage and will not block attacks that bypass shields. This is actually a pretty big deal. Uh, the starting duration is 10 seconds and it's up for 60 seconds. So every every minute you have it up for 10 seconds, which is pretty useful in a firefight, to be honest with you. Especially on Insanity, Barrier is very strong. Stasis is something that you can unlock, which will pretty much remove somebody entirely from the fight. Uh, and that's a that's a good thing, my friends. Now, it says that the makes, makes the target unable to move or attack, but is also immune to damage. Uh, before in Mass Effect 1, you could do damage while they were in stasis. So I don't know if that's a fixed thing or what, but we'll see as we progress through this game. Then we have our adept abilities ourselves, which reduce the recharge time on most of our abilities and increase our biotic protection. 
And then we have the fun stuff here. We have Charm and Intimidate. Now, there used to be a glitch you could do in Mass Effect 1 where you could actually max out both your Charm and your Intimidate, essentially, by maxing out both your Paragon and Renegade, and you just kept replaying this one bit over and over. That probably doesn't exist in this version, so I would definitely consider where you're putting your points here. If you are playing a Paragon game, you want to put some points into Charm. If you are playing a Renegade game, you probably want to put some points into Intimidate. These are going to open up more dialogue options for you that are very rewarding and in some cases are the only way to keep people alive. Consider that. But I'm not going to put any points into anything just yet. There is an opportunity coming up where Charm or Intimidate is going to be very useful. So I want to make sure that I have those points and I can kind of allocate them as I see fit as we go into this next area, as we go into the next episode. So I'm going to hold off on spending any of my points. And guys, that's going to be it for our very first episode of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So excited for you to meet Commander Corey Shepard. I'm excited to see what she can do for the galaxy. I'm excited to have you along for the ride. You guys can check out new videos of the Mass Effect series every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on Missile Dine Online. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you know when we're premiering a new episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to those watching in the premieres every day and uh, to our patrons over on patreon.com slash Missile Dine Online. Sincerely appreciate you guys and wouldn't be able to do this without you. Thank you. And remember, never give up, never surrender to Batarian slavers.